You're ready for the Word of God this morning. Lord, we just thank you that our hearts are now open to receive the Word of the Lord. God, speak to us. Speak, Lord. Challenge us today with your Word. God, may your Word, God, just be hidden in our hearts, Lord, that we would not sin against you in any way. Father, your word is that light to every pathway that we need. Your word, Lord, is the joy and the strength of our soul. And I pray today, Lord, that your word, God, would just flow today. And, and Lord, no distractions, Lord, but that your word would go forth. The enemy would not be able to steal that word away from us. But God, that it would hide in the soil of our soul today. And that we will reap the benefits of your word, Lord. Your word, God, helps us. Your word, God, strengthens us today. How we need your word. Lord, there are people who are listening online today. There are people who have gathered here today, Lord, who need a word from you. And so, Lord, I just pray today. God, that your word will be heard and that the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, Lord, would seal it in our hearts today. That the enemy cannot take the joy of our salvation. May we stand firm upon your word like never before. In these challenging times, in the warfare, Father, that many are going through, I pray, let your word, Lord, be like a river of fresh water for our souls today. In Jesus' name, we pray. And everyone say amen with me this morning. We are in the series called Joy Stealer. Uh, as you know, the enemy would love to take the joy of you serving God, the joy of, of your salvation. And um, I, I brought out a couple of weeks ago that joy is a focus, not necessarily a feeling. We love to have the feelings of joy. We love to have the feelings of happiness. All those things are good. And I said, I don't know anyone who wouldn't want their kids to be happy. Anybody, you just want your kid to live a miserable life? Absolutely not. We all want to see them uh, live a happy life, a joyous life, a wonderful life. But we must also understand this, that joy has to be rooted in something uh, better than Instagram. Joy has to be rooted in something greater than the trials and the tests and the things that we go through in life. Your joy has to have a foundation so that it is stable in, in this life. So as we look at the scriptures today, I want to speak on this subject, and it's simply this. Stand firm. Let nothing move you. Stand firm. Let nothing move you. We're going to look at uh, several different scriptures, but I want to encourage you with Isaiah 40, 31 as we begin to look at this. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. Hope, that feeling of um, confident trust in the Lord. And I love the scripture here. It is letting us know that this eager expectation that you have, this anchor for your soul, this hope that you have uh, in Christ Jesus will renew your strength. You will soar again. You're going to rise above the circumstances that you're going through. This too shall pass. Come on, tell your neighbor, this is going to pass. It's not going to last forever. Somebody say, praise God. Oh, to take a break right there. Hallelujah. This is not going to last forever. Come on. You will run and not grow weary. You will run with the strength of the Lord, it is saying here. And this is not necessarily a running that you would do with your two legs, your, your feet. This is a running with his word in your heart that it has got you 
and it's filled you with hope and expectancy and that hope is renewing your strength each day. You will run and not grow weary. You will walk and you will not faint. In other words, you're not going to give up. Come on, that's a word for somebody right there this morning. And then as we look in 1 Corinthians here, chapter 15, verse 58, our scripture for uh, today. Therefore, my dear brothers, and I would say uh, this brothers meaning those who have put their hope in the Lord, stand firm and let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord. Because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. And what Paul has done here, he is talking to the church because the church was discouraged. Many people were saying that Jesus did not, uh, was not raised from the dead. That he wasn't resurrected. That he wasn't the Messiah. So Paul walks into the congregation of the people and he is writing them a letter to encourage them that you must stand firm and you cannot let everything that you hear move you. I'm telling you, that's a word for us today, isn't it? I mean, when we hear so much on television, we hear so much in the news and from our neighbor. Listen, when you get all of this kind of news going on, the Bible says here, Paul admonishes the people, don't let this stuff move you. People are going to talk. People are going to have an opinion. Don't you let that move you. Amen. He said, you got to still, no matter what's being said, what's being done, what's going on around you, words we know are powerful. Words carry emotion. Words um, are, 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 can wound us and they can hurt us and, and, and those kinds of things. But Paul here is saying no matter what the word that comes your way, no matter what is being said and done today, let nothing move you. In other words, stand firm in the faith of Christ that you have been rooted in and what you have been taught that Christ is the Messiah. He is the Savior of the world and you cannot let that go you got to stand firm with that truth. Amen? Galatians 6, 9. It says, you're not to become weary in well-doing. But I love the second part of that. For in due season, you're going to reap if you don't give up. You don't faint. Again, I believe that we are in a season of enduring. Uh, the church world as a whole, and I'm not talking just crossroads. I, I, I am saying there's some of you this week, you've had to press through some feelings. You've had to press through some trials and some setbacks, some things that are trying to take your joy, some things that are trying to steal the peace that you have within you, things that are trying to move you off of Christ, your solid foundation. There are things that are, are coming against you that are attacking you spiritually, physically, mentally, and they're trying to weary you. But the scripture is saying here, I want you to do something anyway. I want you to love people anyway. I want you to speak my word anyway. I want you to get up and fellowship anyway. I want you to be encouraged in your walk with me, knowing that I will strengthen you and I will help you. In other words, I want you to stand firm in your faith. Don't become weary, church, in doing the right thing. All of you in, in a marriage... Can I talk to all of my married folks today? Don't be weary in staying faithful in that commitment. Don't be weary in doing the right thing in that marriage. Don't be weary in honoring those marriage vows. In a culture today that's saying do whatever you want. See what the enemy wants to do. He wants to steal the joy of that marriage. He wants to steal the joy of that relationship. He wants to, to uh, you to become discouraged that, hey, I'm the one that continually gives 100%. Give 10% more. Give 110. Amen. 
And I'm going to tell you, God is able to help you in your relationships. Don't become weary, he is saying, in doing the right thing. Don't become weary in being the Christian that you need to be. Amen? Be determined in your focus that nothing is going to stop me. I'm not going to compromise and I'm not going to stand here and complain day after day of my trial and, and of my circumstances and the things that I am going through. Can I tell you, when you open your mouth, you must say this, Lord, put a guard around my mouth. And Lord, let my words be those that edify. Let my words be those that are kind and uplifting and encouraging. Even though sometimes I don't feel like it. Come on, somebody. There are times I don't feel like doing the right thing. But I know this. He will help me in my weakness. He'll help me say the kind thing that I need to say. And when I don't know what to say, I'm quiet. Lord, help me to shut my mouth when I need to. Amen. Lord, put a guard over my mouth. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. Amen. That's not even in my notes today. That's just for free right there. <laughs> because your feelings can produce something. Your words can produce something. So that's why you must be careful. You don't need to be saying things like, I'm not going to make it. I can't do this. Yes, you can. Because it's not just your strength. It's his strength and your strength. It's not just your word. It's his word and your word put together. You can do all things. Amen. If your focus is godly, rooted in faith, it's going to move you in a righteous direction. It's going to move you in a pathway that is going to be pleasing to God. And it's going to be in a pathway also that's going to bring you an inward peace and a joy within your soul. Your soul must be anchored in God. You cannot be wishy-washy with your faith today. You're going to have to put your faith Firmly and rooted in Christ. If your focus is ungodly with doubts and unbelief, you will move in a very selfish, worldly, uh, and I can say this, an enemy-directed pathway direction, right? If you don't have the right focus, you won't have the peace of mind that you need in your heart. Amen? I found that when I get bad news, we've all received that before, amen, when I feel overwhelmed, when life starts crashing in around me, when I have frustrations and my attention seems to be everywhere but where it needs to be, that I won't and I don't walk in peace. But when I focus and when I put my hope firmly in Christ, I can walk in a peace. Amen. I've noticed when I give God my attention, I notice when I focus on the word of God. I notice when I seek God in the morning time, in the evening time, in the noon time, at night time. When I surround myself with godly and faith-filled believers, when my throat is itchy, man, I wish I could just reach down there and just scratch right there, you know. Amen. Scratch it, Lord. When I surround myself with the right things, when I surround myself with the right music, I know that peace begins to dominate my mind. Peace overshadows the worries and the frustrations that come my way. I have found that if I keep dwelling on the attacks, on the worries and the frustrations and the setbacks, it causes me anxiety and I begin to lose my joy and my voice. Amen. Amen. Sorry about that, folks. Give me one second. 
The Bible says, he will keep you in perfect peace. That's the peace we need. His peace is perfect. When we're going through circumstances and things and trials and attacks of the enemy, I need the peace of God. Amen? I need his peace to overwhelm me. You need a determined spiritual focus, an unwavering focus, a firm foundation, an uncompromising faith that says, I'm not going to let what I'm going through move me and detour me. You have to have a focus upon the Lord and his strength, not necessarily your strength. Amen? Paul was focused on doing a great work in the kingdom of God. He said this, And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom. Paul experienced so many different kinds of personal attacks upon his life. Paul even named one of his attackers. I don't recommend you doing that on Facebook, but, but he wrote it for the world to read it. He said this in 2 Timothy 4, 14. He said, Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. And the Lord rewarded him according to his works. In other words, he didn't get by with it. The Lord saw exactly the attack upon Paul. And Paul is saying, I let the Lord deal with him. Some of y'all need to let the Lord deal with them. The people that are attacking you, the people that are coming against you, come on, let the Lord deal with them. He goes on to say in uh, verse 16 and 17, he said, at my first trial, no one acted in my defense as my advocate or took my part or even stood with me. But notice what he said. He said, everybody forsook me. May it not be charged against them. In other words, I don't wish them evil. I'm not going to say anything bad about them. He's verse 17, but the Lord stood by me and strengthened me so that through me the gospel message might be fully proclaimed and all the, and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I, deliver, I was delivered out of the jaws of the lion. Let me tell you something. When the jaws of the lion, when the attacks come, he is saying here, if nobody else stands with you, if nobody else is with you, there is somebody with you. The Lord will stand with you. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord praise. He's with you. <clears throat> the attacks on Paul were designed to distract him. And in the season of attack, I want to remind everybody here, if nobody stands with you, the Lord is there with you. And not only the Lord is going to be with you when you are attacked or personally attacked in any kind of way, the Lord says here that he will strengthen you when you are under attack so that you will be able to endure. Aren't you grateful for that today? that you can stand even in the season of a personal attack. And I want to go into, and I want to break down Psalms 119 for us this morning because this is a powerful uh, chapter right here. I'm going to look at verses 92 through 112 because we will see in this how that you can keep your joy even when you're under a personal attack. The psalmist said this, if your law had not been my delight, and when we look at this word, I wanna, I'm want to. i just going to teach a little bit right here because I want you to get this. He said, if your law had not been my delight, in other words, he enjoyed opening up the Torah at that time and reading the word of God. He enjoyed what the word of the Lord had to say. So if your word had not been my delight, 
if I had not known your word, he is saying, I would have perished in my affliction. Can I tell you why there are people who don't have hope today? Who are not strong and resilient today and able to withstand the attacks? Because they do not enjoy the word of God. They don't stand firm in the word of God. Come on, folks. You've got to love his word. And the way you're going to love it is to keep opening up and reading it and believing it and trusting in the word of God. He said, I would have perished in my affliction. I will never forget your precepts. What he is saying, I'm not going to forget your word. I'm not going to forget what you have said. He said, for by them, in other words, your words, they have preserved my life. Does anybody feel like that this morning? As I was reading that, God, I said, there's been so many times I've looked at the word of God, and the word of God has stood by me, strengthened me, and it has preserved my heart and my mind, and, it, and, and I was able to stand firm in the season of attack because... His word preserved my life. I remember when I was sick, his word preserved my life. It brought healing and strength to my body. Notice what he says. He says, save me. I am yours. I have sought out your precepts. Again, I've sought out your ways, not my ways, Lord. I, I, I've lived my life to try to please you, not myself. And he goes on to say, the wicked are waiting to destroy me. But I will ponder your statues. He is saying here again, God, I'm just going to put my focus upon your teaching and your word. And, and for anybody here today who's going through something challenging, you're going through a difficult time. Maybe you're weary and, and you feel like, God, how am I going to make it? This simple word right here uh, of, of, of loving the word of God and opening his word and studying it out for yourself will preserve your life. He says in verse 97, oh, how I love your law. He is saying this, Lord, I love your word. Every word, I love it. Because it strengthens me. It causes me to stand firm and believe. He goes on to say, I meditated on it all day. I am wiser than my enemies. Hallelujah, somebody. I have more insight than my enemies. Why? Because I've, made, I've meditated on the word of God. I have more understanding now. In verse 101, he says, I have kept my, it has kept my feet from the evil path. Verse 103, how sweet are your words to my taste. Verse 104, I gain understanding from your precepts. Therefore, I hate every wrong path. Your word is a lamp for my feet and a light on my path. Verse 107 says, and I know that all of us can relate to this, I have suffered much. The psalmist is not hiding the fact that I'm suffering, I'm going through a trial, I'm going through a very difficult time in my life, but I will not forsake your word. I'm, even though I'm suffering, I'm not going to choose the wrong pathway. I'm going to choose the path that is pleasing to the Lord, even if it means I have to suffer for it. Wow. He said, because this, even in the suffering, God preserves my life. Even though the times are difficult and the wicked are waiting to destroy me, the Lord is going to preserve me and the Lord is going to help me. I'm going to be wiser than the fools around me. I'm going to have more insight than those around me and it's going to keep my feet from evil. How sweet are your words to my taste. Verse 104 says this, I gain understanding from your precepts and your commands. Therefore, I hate every 
wrong path. Your word is a lamp to my feet, a light to my path. I have suffered much. Notice what he says in verse 108. Except, Lord, the willing praise of my mouth and teach me your word, your law. I want to ask a very serious question this morning. Can your praise be stopped by the attack on your life? Can your praise be stopped by the suffering and the hard times and the setbacks that you may be going through in your life? I ask you this morning, are you allowing what you're going through to stop you from praising God? The attack of the enemy has a design. When you cannot praise God in the middle of attack or even in the middle of suffering, the enemy is after your joy and your peace. In the middle of suffering, some of I feel like the best praise I ever gave God is when I was going through my hardest trials. Some of the best praise I feel like that I ever gave God is when I stood up in the middle of affliction and raised my hands to him and said, God, I still trust you. Your word will I hide in my heart. The enemy does not want you to praise like that in the season of an attack. He says, the wicked have set a snare for me. But I have not strayed from your precepts. Your statutes are my heritage forever. Notice what he says here. Read it with me. They are the joy of my heart. What he is saying here, even in the season of attacks and circumstances that I'm going through that I do not like, my heart finds strength even in the trial, that I still have joy in whatever I am going through. This is that stand firm, let nothing move you kind of hope in the Lord. This is where we all have to get in our lives, that we stand firm. We let nothing move us. I don't have money to pay my rent. This, I'm not going to let nothing move me. I'm going to be wise. Yes, I am. I'm going to be wiser than the enemy. Yes, I am. How can I be wiser than the enemy? Because the Lord is with me. Because I have put his precepts, his word, I have hid it in my heart. In the season of personal attack, your focus has to be to pursue the presence of God like never before in your life. Then that's when your heart is going to rest in the joy of your salvation. If you are in the season of a personal attack, it is vital that you make time with God. If you're broken, if you're mad, if you're angry, if you even in the bitterness and all those kinds of things that try to come, make time for God. God knows what's going on. Amen. I remember one time praying and I went and sat in the corner and said, God, I'm mad. God said, okay, tell me about it. Right? God, I'm angry right now. Okay, tell me all about it. That's where we need to take that instead of Facebook. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Spend time. You got to spend some time meditating on God. This week, I mean, I just had to take time. I was like, okay, I'm going to have to get by myself. This is frustrating me. This isn't working out right. I don't know what's going on here. God, what's going on? I don't understand this attack. I don't understand what they're saying here. I don't know what they're doing over here. So I have to spend time. I said, Lord, let me just get my focus on you. Let me get my heart right. Amen? Amen. Develop more wisdom regarding the purpose of the attack. See, what does criticism do? Anybody ever got any of that before? Criticism is an attack that is designed to distract you. This personal attack is opposition that is designed to to, uh, distract your focus on 
God. It is intended to discourage you and to steal your joy. It's intended to discourage even those around you and those desiring to help you. Criticism is meant to make your future look undesirable, even unattainable. It is a personal attack to take your zeal from you, your energy from you, your focus from you, and your joy from you. But I need somebody today to say, no, it's not. I'm going to stand firm in the word of God. I'm going to trust him even though I'm being attacked. Now, I want to remind you of something that's so important. Your attitude is more important than the attack. Come on, somebody. I said, your attitude is more important than the attack right now. It's more important than the criticism. Because the wrong attitude is fertile ground for bitterness to grow and resentment to grow in your heart. The wrong attitude will derail your future. The wrong attitude will give you the wrong focus. And with the wrong attitude, you will not be able to stand against the enemy. Amen? Hebrews 12, 15 says it like this. Look after each other. I love this scripture. <laughs> when was the last time you checked on your brother and sister? I just don't want to bother nobody. Call them anyway. Text them anyway. Amen. Email them anyway. Whatever. Communicate anyway. Look after each other so that none of you fails to receive the grace of God. Let them know that they're going to make it. Maybe they tell you what they've been through and how they felt. The Lord don't feel like I can get back up. You let them know they can get back up. You let them know how powerful the strength of the Lord is in their life. Amen. That they would receive the grace of God. Watch out that no poisonous root of bitterness grows up to trouble you, corrupting many. Isn't it amazing how one person can destroy so many people? It's, it's like uh, I preached uh, several weeks ago about the children of Israel. God wanted to give them this wonderful land, but yet they had two people that said they looked like grasshoppers, act like grasshoppers, and could be nothing but grasshoppers. And you know what? A grasshopper mentality is what killed them all. The giants didn't even kill them. It was the words and what they believed. Look after each other. I want to give you two keys before we close. Two keys to remember in every attack. If there's anything <coughs> that I believe that the enemy is wanting to do, he is wanting to steal the joy of our salvation. So the attack reveals that your enemy fully believes you are capable of of obtaining your goal. Can I read that again to you? The attack reveals that your enemy believes that what God has put in your heart, that you're able to complete it and do it. I said the enemy believes in the God assignment upon your life. The attack is to distract you. It's to discourage you. It wants you to give up. It wants you to quit. It wants you to think that there is no way you can ever obtain your goal. There's no way you can ever overcome the setbacks that you have gone through. That you will never be able uh, to, to reach and finish what God has put within your heart. Remember, your sufficiency is not of you. Your strength, it comes from the Lord. And the Lord, what he has put in your heart, will help you to obtain it. Philippians 3.12, Paul speaks these, these words. He said, I have not yet reached my goal. And I am not perfect by any means, he is saying. But he says this, but Christ has taken hold of me. <laughs> There's something got a grip on your life that's so much greater than you are. There's something that's got a hold of you that is so much greater 
than the trial and the test that you're going through right now. There is something that's holding on to you that's not letting you go. You wonder, Lord, how am I going to get through? I'm telling you, he's got a hold of your life. Paul's saying, Christ has a hold on me. What you need to say is fear don't have a grip on me. Christ has a hold on me. What you need to tell yourself is that fear does not have a grip on my life. But God does. He's the one that's holding me together. He's the one who is the strength of my life and is keeping me. <coughs> he said this, so I keep on running. Somebody say, keep on running. I just keep on running. And he says this, and I'm still struggling to take hold of the prize. And this is what I wanted you to get out of this. You can still struggle and still keep running. It's okay. Struggling is a sign that you're still running. Struggling is a sign that you still believe God. Struggling is a sign that you're still trusting Him. So don't just set your eyes on your trial. You need to set your focus on Christ today. He is the joy of your soul. He is the strength of your life. Don't set your mind on being perfect either. <laughs> For all you perfectionists out there, and I want to tell you this, don't focus on what you are not. Focus on who is standing with you. Focus on who's got a hold of your life. Who's got a hold of your circumstances. He knows you. He's going to help you. He would say this, I believe Paul would say in every attack and every criticism, criticism, just remember that Christ has his hand upon your life. It is God who has given you. And I say this this morning with all of my heart. It is God who has given you a godly goal for your life. It is God who has given you this godly desire in your life. It is God who is the strength of your life. Even in the struggles that you are facing. Even in this season of attack. Even in your discouragement. I remind you God Almighty has his hand on your life it's okay to struggle sometimes but keep running with it hallelujah struggling is not a sign of weakness struggling is not a sign that God has left you struggling is not a sign that you have failed struggling is not a sign that you're not capable Struggling is not a sign that you're not accepted. Struggling is a sign that the enemy believes that you are well able to do what God has placed within your heart. Crossroads Community Church, your struggle. You don't wrestle against flesh and blood. But there's an enemy that wants to discourage you and wants to hinder your progress in the Lord. But you keep struggling alone. You keep running with the vision. God is with you. The attack reveals that your enemy fully believes you're capable of obtaining your goal. And then secondly, as we get ready to close this, Satan will attack at the birth of something significant in your life. I said, Satan will attack at the birth of something significant in your life. You say, Pastor, is that even biblical? Let me, let me give you a couple of things. Remember how Jesus was baptized in the Jordan? The Holy Spirit comes down and says, this is my son. Oh, I like him. I'm well pleased with him. I got my hand on him. Yeah, I'm going to be with him. And then right then he goes right into a wilderness. Hello, somebody. The assignment, starting his ministry, and the enemy comes with attack after attack. Woo. Blow after blow. 
to try to stop the advancement of what Christ was going to do. I hear the Lord talking to us today. Some of you didn't think, oh, I'm going to obey God. I'm going to walk in the assignment that He's given me. And you didn't expect the attacks that were coming. Did you think the enemy's going to lay down and roll over and say, go ahead? Absolutely not. But let me tell you how Jesus overcame the enemy of his soul and that was this he hid the word of God in his heart amen and every time the enemy attacked him he gave the enemy something he gave the enemy the word of the Lord can I tell you you don't need to be fussing at the enemy he laughing at you leave me alone he's laughing at you how are you gonna combat the enemy you give him the word of God. Hey, the word of God says this. It says this. And that's how you attack the enemy with the word of God. Amen. Moses was struggling with who God had called him. You've got to realize this. When Moses was born, God had already put within him the assignments. And what does Herod do? He comes at the birth of Moses and starts killing all the babies because the enemy believed that what God put in a baby boy was greater and more powerful than anything that he could stop or hinder. Let me tell you this this morning. So the enemy came after him. He came to attack him. He came to kill Moses and to destroy Moses, but he could not do it. I want to remind everyone, the enemy can't destroy you. I said the enemy cannot kill you. The only way you're going to be destroyed is you destroy yourself because you don't believe in his word. You don't stand firm on his word. You're not, hey, you cannot let this stuff move you that you're going through. Amen? Moses wasn't capable in his own strength. We read the story of Moses and, and they tell us that Moses more than likely had a, a speech impediment of some kind, slow of speech. But the attack was confirmation that God was birthing something significant in his life. The attack was designed to deplete the joy. That is why you must stand firm and let nothing move you. Don't lose your faith. You've got to stand firm. Don't lose your confidence. You must stand firm. Trust God. He will not fail you. Stand firm in your faith. This morning... I want to give you one more example. Have you wondered how Joseph was able to keep his focus when his own family despised him? His own family rejected him. His own family turned their back on him. They didn't believe in his dream. His father even rebuked him. His brothers, they envied and they hated him. What made, what made all of his brothers just despise and hate him? What made him so angry? I mean, he was, the, he was about the, one of the youngest of, of the brothers, and, and yet they, they hated on him. They threw, as the young people say, they threw shade on him. But there was this God assignment on the inside of him. And I think what I, I truly feel in the Spirit this morning is there's all these God assignments that are setting. Every one of y'all... Every one of you that I see out here, I see a God assignment. It's not just a person. There's a God assignment on the inside of you. There's something that God wants you to do. There's something that God wants to birth in every last one of you. But there is a dream killer out there. You better listen to me. There is a dream killer out there. There is someone that wants to put you in a prison and lock you up. There's, some, there's an enemy that wants to put you in a pit and discourage you and take the joy of your salvation. Why did they attack Joseph? Because Joseph's dreams was his assignment. It was in his dreams. His dreams was his passion, his joy. His dreams was in his calling. 
His dreams was his mission in life. Remember, God gave Joseph the ability to not only dream, but to interpret dreams. So Joseph knew that God was speaking to him through his dreams. He felt the greatness of every one of those dreams in his life. He felt them, but his own family did not even believe in them. He knew that God was giving him a glimpse of his assignments. And, and what I really feel like in some of you, that, that God has given you these glimpses of your assignment, but yet it hasn't come to pass yet. And there's been a lot of discouragement. There's been a lot of distractions going on in your life. And it seems like you're being ambushed by the enemy. The enemy wants to sabotage what God is birthing and doing in your heart and in your life right now. But don't be surprised if even those around you don't believe that you've heard from God. Even those that were closest to him, his own brothers were willing to scheme. They were willing to lie. They were willing to even kill. But let me tell you this, God sees the undermining. God sees every backstabbing. God sees every character assassination. And he says there's no weapon formed that's going to prosper against every assignment that he has given you. I want you to understand that this morning. They did not perceive and understand that God was working in Joseph's life. They had no faith in him nor his dream. Scripture records their words. I want you to, to look at their words in Genesis 37, 20. And we shall see what will become of his dreams. Can I tell you what Satan's whispering to some of y'all? Uh, we'll see what will become of your marriage. Oh, we'll see what will become of your dreams when I attacked you by using your own family against you. Oh, we'll see what happens. You think you dreamed a dream. I'm the dream killer. We'll see what happens when I put you in a pit. We'll see if you'll praise God then. We'll see if you want to dream dreams and We'll see what will become of your future when I get through with you. That's what the enemy's doing. He's mocking some of you because you have taken a stand in your life to stand firm on the Word of God. Can I tell you, no matter what happens in your life, stand firm. Don't let the trial move you. Don't let the, the doubts and, and the naysayers move you. Stand firm in the Word of God. If nobody believes in your dreams, God does because he put it there. If your own brothers, if your own family don't believe in you, God, if God be for me, who can be against me? <laughs> if God be for me, who can stand against our God? I said, who can stand against him? Man, I'm preaching with a rough voice this morning, aren't I? But I feel it so in my spirit. If I have to whisper it in your ear this morning, I hear the Lord Almighty saying, what I have put in your heart, the devil cannot stomp it out. Amen. A strong drink can't stomp it out. Amen. Drugs can't stomp it out. Because when I put something in you, it will come forth no matter the attack on your life. Yes, it will. Come on, stand up. Everybody just stand up on your feet this morning. But I read this. There was an attack on Joseph's family was attacked. I want you to listen to me. Everybody put your attention right here. Because this is so important right now. The attack was on his family. The attack was on his life. The attack was on his character. 
the attack was on his dreams. I want you to think of that this morning. But you have an unfair advantage over the enemy. The Bible says when Joseph was personally attacked, that this was the word of the Lord over his life. The Bible says this, but the Lord was with Joseph. I feel this so strong this morning. Somebody has been under such a, an attack. But I hear the Lord say, but I am with you. Somebody's been rejected. But the Lord is with you. Somebody is struggling right now. But the Lord is with you. Somebody is going through one of the hardest trials of your life. But the Lord has his hand on you. Some of y'all looking at your family and shaking your head and saying, Oh God, what dysfunction in my family. And I would like to tell you, welcome to the family. But the Lord is with you. I want to also tell you this morning to everybody in this building, everybody listening online, the reason you're going to fulfill your assignment, there's been so many distractions in your life but the reason you're going to fulfill your assignment is because God is with you. But pastor, I have failed the Lord. I said you didn't hear me, but God is with you. Pastor, I've doubted. I've had unbelief. But the Lord is with you. Pastor, if you only knew. I don't need to know. But the Lord sent me here to say this, stand firm. And don't let this stuff you've gone through move you. But trust in my word with all of your heart. Don't lean to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge me, I'm directing your pathway. Whew. Let me tell you why you're going to do more than you ever thought possible. Because the Lord is with you. Amen. Satan is attacking because he believes more in the assignment on your life than you do. <laughs> you should be rejoicing this morning that even though you are under this attack, it's just confirmation that God is with you and that he has given you this assignment over your life and so Paul says to them don't be weary in due season you're going to reap Ooh, I feel the Lord in that <laughs> can we give God praise all over this building Lord thank you come on sweetheart <laughs> struggling is not a sign of weakness Struggling is not a sign that God has left you. Struggling is not a sign that you have failed and it's, it's never going to happen in your life. Struggling is not a sign that you're not capable. No. Struggling is a sign that the enemy believes you're well able to do what God has put in your heart. Amen. Oh, I love the Lord right now. Some of y'all are struggling, and everybody's got their own struggle, don't they? Let's worship together in one song, and then we're going to close in prayer. I've seen your goodness on the mountain. I felt your love down in my valley. And your grace to Oh, you've been 
Let's worship him for a moment before we leave here. Oh, I've seen. that grace that is surrounding us this morning. God, you've been good. God, you've been good to me. Oh, you've been good to me. be delivering this message if God wasn't reading your mail and then God just coming to me and say okay this is what I want you to tell my people I want you to tell them to stand firm this is a season of not being detoured it's a season where you're going to have to focus like never before anybody ever had a major exam coming up and like everything goes haywire the week you need to study. You know what I'm saying? It's like, and everything's happening around you and you like, you need to focus and, and, and you need to study. I remember there were nights that I stayed up all night long just cramming for that exam and trying to pray in tongues. Lord, you better help me. God, you gotta help me get through this. You know what I'm saying? And, and just cramming for that and, and, and all these things going on around us and it was I just remember it was hard to focus but I want to tell somebody I know you're going through a difficult season in your life and I know you're going through some challenging times but God sent me by with my throat all messed up this morning to encourage you that no matter what you got to stand firm you got to trust him you got to hide his word in your heart you got to have spent some time with the Lord you got to worship him in the season of attack. Amen. <laughs> the attack on your life is just confirmation that there is an assignment on your life. How many children have you, your children and your grandchildren have been attacked? You need anybody? Come on, let's get up on both hands. I, I mean, family members, even you personally are being attacked because the enemy knows his time is short and the Bible says he's come down with wrath. He's come down to try to discourage you. But I'm telling the church this morning, you better stand firm in the Lord today. Stand your ground in him today. In the season of attack, don't you let him have your joy. If you have to struggle, it's okay. Who am I talking to this morning? Pastor, I'm struggling with my faith right now. It's okay. You're going to make it. Because God's going to strengthen you today. You're not leaving here without hope today. You see what I'm saying? The Lord is going to help you. The Lord is going to stand by you. Whatever you have to face and whatever you have to go. Just like Joseph. He raised him up out of the pit, didn't he? He went to jail 
He stayed there longer than he wanted to. See, some of y'all in y'all's trial a whole lot longer than you want to be in that trial. But eventually, God brought him out. And God used his gifting. God used his time. God used everything he put in Joseph. Because what God saw coming down the line was a famine. God saw that the economy was going to turn around. And for all of you out there worried about the economy, don't. For all y'all worried about your 401k, don't. don't. For y'all out there worried about your job, don't. Trust God. Believe God. Stand firm in your faith. I said stand firm in your faith. I'm going to challenge your faith today. You know what the devil told me this week? Hold on one second. I just want y'all to hear. You know what the devil told me this week? So I'm just going to get it out there for y'all. Why are you hiring a youth pastor? Don't you know the economy's on a downturn? You better save that money. You better put more on your staff. Let them work more. Let them do some... I like the devil is a liar, isn't he? Not only am I... Lord, if you tell me to hire two more, I'll hire two more. God, I'll do whatever you say because, Lord, it's not my work, it's your work. God, that cabin out there, it don't belong to me. It sits on your property, God. It's, it's your house. It's your ministry. It's your work. It ain't mine. Just tell the devil he ain't nothing but a lie and move on. You know what? Resist the devil, the Bible says. He's going to get away from you. We need to do more resisting and stop entertaining the thoughts of the enemy. So I thought about it for a second. I said, well, you know what? I believe I have an assignment at Crossroads. And I believe God has put it within my heart that we need to hire this young man and that we should just keep going forward if we have to struggle a little bit we're going to keep going hello somebody we don't quit because we struggle Paul said you keep pressing you keep moving forward I know I've got you standing but I just want to encourage somebody today don't act like the devil only talks to you he talks to Janet too and then she tells me what he says. I'm kidding. He talks to all of us, doesn't he? Our circumstances talk to us. Our trials are going to talk to us. But we need to talk back and say, I don't care. I'm going to stand firm in my faith. I don't care what it looks like. I'm going to trust the Lord today. I don't care what it looks like on Monday. I'm going to trust you. I don't care what it looks like on Tuesday. I still believe you, Lord. I don't care what I feel like today. God, I still believe. Go to that scripture, 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Let's read it as we close. We got to go out of here with the word. Therefore, read it with me. My dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord because you know. You know the people who have the most joy are the people who are giving of themselves. That's how you're going to have joy. Quit being so inwardly focused. Preach, Pastor. Oh, it's me. It's my family. It's my trial. Oh, wow, 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 wow. What I'm always going through, what I'm always feeling, focus on something else. Stand firm in your faith and do it anyway. Amen. You love me? You love me anyway? Folks, I'm telling you, we have come this far by faith. Leaning on the Lord. And if we're going to keep going, we're going to have to keep going by faith. That's the only way we're going to make it. Amen. I love Crossroads. I love you. I love this church. I love the assignment that's over this house and this ministry. And I want to tell you, we've had setbacks. Yes, we've had. The past
pandemic has been a setback all over the world, but it's a setup for God to do his best work. Amen. Let's give God praise.